Hello everyone, uh, Stepan here. I'll finish the series on the Italian game with the Gioco Piano, which is the the most important and the most thematic of all the variations of the of the Italian game and probably one of the most uh, popular openings in all of chess. Now, it's the oldest opening, the oldest recorded opening. Uh, it's been played since the Renaissance and uh, the first time it was recorded was in the early 16th century actually and the first Italian uh, well, you can't really call them grandmasters, but the first gre great chess players played the opening and actually developed the theory already, even back then in the 16th century. So one of the oldest openings, one of the most heavily analyzed openings and one of the most popular openings, and it's played from the beginner to the grandmaster level and everybody plays it. Now, the Gioco Piano is uh, only one... Uh, uh, one variation of the Italian game, uh, not variation, but one branch of the Italian game, but still, I think it's, uh, along with Roy Lopez, one of the best openings uh, to develop your chess skills, and it develops your positional play, your strategical understanding of the game, your tactical abilities, and uh, your, your general thinking in chess. And in this video, uh, I'm not going to go into too many variations, I'm not going to go into too many exact move orders, because the Gioco Piano is uh, not about the move orders at all, it's about the ideas in the opening and understanding the key squares, the piece positioning, pawn breakthroughs and the taking ideas. So going into too many variations would, I think, only confuse you, because there's too many of them. Uh, the theory is so vast, so vast that I couldn't cover it in five hours, probably. So I'm going to try and share the ideas in, in the Gioco Piano, the main ideas. Now after pawn to e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, uh, bishop to c4, the Italian game, black plays bishop to c5, this is now Gioco Piano, and of course uh, white could continue in several different ways, we have covered uh, different openings already in the playlist, I have put uh, all the other videos in the description below, you can check them out there if you're interested in, in the Evans Gambit or something uh, aggressive like that. And today... Uh, we are going to go over the Gioco Piano classical Italian game with pawn to c3 and this is I think one of the most popular openings out there and probably out of every 10 chess games one of them at least is, is this position. So okay, uh, black has one move as response here and that's knight to f6. Uh, the only other move that you might see occasionally is the move queen to e7 which doesn't really pose such a big threat. This is close, uh, close, called the closed uh, classical Italian, here white simply castles and the position is similar to the normal Gioco Piano but you have you have the queen on e7 which I think is a nuisance, you are going to see why, because this knight actually often wants to get from e7 to g6. So this move queen to e7 changes plans for black significantly. But as I said, the move queen to e7 isn't really a big problem and it doesn't really uh, mean that the black is threatening something, so we're not going to go into that too much. And it's such a small sideline that you might never encounter it at all. So okay, after c3, the main move, knight to f6. And here uh, we are going to go over three main options for white. Uh, the classical Gioco Piano, uh, which is called Gioco Pianissimo after d3, uh, is the main line in the Gioco Piano, the main line of the classical Italian game, and this is what we are going to uh, uh, emphasize the most, because this is the most important variation in the Italian game, this is why I've saved it for last. And first we are going to go over two sidelines. Um, one of them, after knight to f6, is pawn to d4, the center attack, and another one is pawn to b4, bird's attack. Okay, let's go over the center attack first. c3, knight to f6, d4. Now, even though this might seem much more aggressive than d3, uh, I think it actually leads to a lesser advantage uh, for white than d3, because this often leads to equal endgames. We are going to see why. Uh, white is opening up the center immediately, putting pressure on black's position. Black has nothing better uh, to play than to take on d4. So e takes d4, c takes d4, and here, of course, uh, black can't take the e4 pawn because the bishop is hanging. So the only move, and this is a very forced line, uh, is bishop to b4 check. Here, uh, white plays bishop to d2. Blocking with the bishop is much better than blocking with the knight, because if white blocks with the knight, then knight takes e4 is a move, and black is winning. And here, black has two options. One of them is a great way to kill uh, the game, I would say, and get a drawn uh, ending, and it's been played on the highest level, and that's knight takes e4, 
Uh, I'm going to show you that uh, now. That's not the main move. The main move is to take the bishop and white takes with the b knight, defending e4. But after bishop to d2, white can uh, also white also has to accept the fact that black can play. Uh, Knight takes e4, and now you didn't lose a pawn, you can gain the pawn back tactically, and this here is a very forced line. Bishop takes b4, knight takes b4, you sacrifice your bishop temporarily, bishop f7, king f7, and now the point is queen to b3 check. Winning back the piece, and after king f8, queen takes b4, the best move is queen e7, white has nothing better to do than to exchange, and this here, as you can see, is a, is a completely equal position where white has two knights, black has a bishop and a knight. White has this isolated pawn on d4, but that's not not a big deal really. And uh, this position is why I avoid playing d4 on move 5. I avoid playing the center attack because I really think that you can't expect to win here. I mean, you can. You can win some of the games, but you can't really be sure that you have a winning chance, especially not against stronger opponents. So yeah, this line... Uh, is why I don't like the center attack. And after bishop to d2, very often players with, with black, if they are content with the draw, are going to take on e4. If they don't, the main line, bishop takes d2, knight b takes d2, d5, opening up the center, e d5, knight d5, queen to b3. Once again, a very forcing line <coughs> in which uh, white gets a slightly better position, but nothing major. Uh, the main move here for white, as you for black, as you might expect, is knight to a5. And now queen to a4 check, the knight is forced back to c6, and you basically repeat this until black doesn't play knight a5 but plays knight c2 e7. After queen to a4, if black plays uh, c6, that's already much better for white, because now you can take on d5, queen d5 and castle, and white has more activity. After rook f to e1, you're threatening rook here, after rook to c1, you're threatening rook here, winning the knight. So black has to waste a move playing b6, you play rook to e5 anyway. You can see that all of your pieces are more active than, than black black's pieces and uh, I think this is favorable for white but of course black isn't going to play c6 black is going to play knight c6 and after you repeat uh, black might even go for a draw white has nothing better to do than to check after that because you don't want to give up your bishop so after knight c2 e7 uh, once again an equal position white has an isolated pawn and nothing major going on and that's why I think that the center attack after c3 uh, knight to f6, playing d4, even though it might seem aggressive, isn't as good for white. It's it's not bad, it's equal, slightly, slightly better for white, but you can't really expect a huge advantage. Uh, the other move, uh, the bird's attack after knight to f6, b4, is slightly more aggressive, but it actually leads to a completely equal position for black, uh, or in fact a slightly better position for black. This is too risky, uh, expanding on the flank and uh, not developing your, the rest of your pieces. So now the main move uh, for black is bishop to b6. One sideline that's worth mentioning is bishop to e7. I think this is a very good move, in fact. Even though the bishop might be more active on this diagonal, bishop to e7 is quite a good move. Uh, white continues with d three castles castles and the point of bishop to e7 is d5 you want your bishop in the defense after you play d5 white has to take e d5 knight d5 b5 chasing the knight away knight a5 bishop takes d5 a very open position a position in which white uh, doesn't really have any control uh, it's very uh, chaotic i would say and i wouldn't be comfortable playing this even though the black knight is misplaced on a5 i think uh, this isn't a safe position for white. Now, queen takes d5, c4, queen to d8, bishop to d2, uh, threatening the knight, b6, knight e5, bishop f6. It's a weird position. White has an edge, but nothing major. Uh, you can even win this pawn temporarily, but I really don't like this position for white because your whole center is loose. Your d3 pawn and your c4 pawn are going to get under a lot of pressure. Uh, the bishop is going to find himself on the beautiful b7 square, putting pressure on g2 and f3. And uh, yeah, I, I think this is favorable for black, in fact, even though the engines might think that white is better. So bishop to e7 after the bird's attack is a very aggressive line in which you hope to play b5, d5 and open up the center. The main line is bishop to b6, which is also perfectly fine for black. In fact, here the engines think that black is equal. d3, d6. You don't play d5 in this variation when you play uh, bishop to b6. a4, a5. b5, knight e7, which isn't really a problem. Black wants his knight on g6 anyway, so nothing major going on in the position for white. I mean, of course, you can win these positions, uh, you can get aggressive setups here, but... I think um, both of these moves, the bird's attack and uh, 
and the center attack are inferior to the Gioco Pianissimo, the, the main line of the classical Italian with, with d3. So let's go over that. Uh, first of all, after bishop to c5, white could also play castles instead of c3, uh, but that would basically transpose to the same positions, unless white wants to go for the Deutz gambit or something more aggressive. So here, after knight to f6, white basically plays d3, uh, defending the pawn, and after castles, white played c3, plays c3, so we have the same position. So after c3 here, knight to f6, d3, uh, the Joko pianissimo, uh, one of the most wonderful positions in all of chess. And uh, where to begin? Uh, this is uh, a game of ideas. The Gioco Pianissimo uh, is a position in which you have to be patient, in which you have to understand your plans, you have to understand your opponent's plans, you have to push through your own and prevent your opponent's ideas. And that's why I think the position is beautiful. Uh, you get to plan 10 or 15 moves in advance, 5 or 10 moves in advance, 2 or 3 moves in advance, it doesn't matter, but you get to plan. You have time, you can prepare an attack, you can prepare a pawn thrust, you can prepare uh, putting pressure on a single pawn, on a single square, and that's why I think the position is beautiful. Now, from this position on, there are several move orders here for black. Um, black can continue with d6, which is the main move, black can continue with a6, with castles, uh, several different moves, but they all lead to the same position, and they all have the same ideas in mind. Now, uh, as black, what you have to do? First of all, uh, white is putting a lot of pressure on the e5 pawn, white is putting pressure on the f7 pawn, so this Italian bishop is putting pressure on the long diagonal, the knight is putting pressure on e5, so one of the moves that you want to play is d6, which uh, defends the, the, the pawn, the e5 pawn. And another move we want to play is castles, just to um, put your king to safety and release the pressure of the f7 pawn. Now, the first problem is your is your e5 pawn. You can already see that white is able to play b4, b5. In some positions, the e5 pawn might be loose then. So that's why I want to play d6. Another thing is uh, that and that's one of the points of white c3, is that you, as black, in some positions, want to play knight to a5, winning the bishop pair. If you can get rid of the Italian bishop, the Gioco Piano gets much less dangerous for black. But you can't play knight to a5 until your d6 pawn has been... until you've played d6, because if knight to a5 here, then you can simply take, uh, take the e5 pawn. So, okay, you want to play d6 to be able to play knight to a5 and defend your e5 pawn. The second thing is you want to castle. Now as black, now as white, sorry. You, you play c3, uh, first of all, uh, to get uh, more pressure on the center and to strengthen your d4 pawn break. This is one of your main ideas. You want to play the move d4. Uh, d3 might seem like a waste of time, but it's actually a necessary evil uh, uh, during the process, before being able to be uh, to play d4, because you have to keep the defense of the e4 pawn, you have to castle first, and you have to develop your pieces before playing d4. So that's one thing. Secondly, you play c3 not only to push d4, but to give your bishop an escape square. As I said, a very common plan is knight to a5, and uh, if the d6 if the e5 pawn isn't defended, then knight takes e5 is normal. However, if d6 has been played, then knight to a5 is a real threat. So one of the main moves in the Italian and one of the main ideas in the Gioco Piano is to get your bishop to b3 voluntarily before knight to a5 has been played, because after knight to a5, if you play uh, bishop to b3, then knight takes b3. So you play bishop to b3 to make sure that when black plays knight to a5, you can put your bishop on c2. Now, the second benefit of that, not only you save your bishop, but the bishop on c2 actually defends the e4 pawn, which is uh, commonly a target for black in the Gioco Piano, and black is often going to put a lot of pressure on the e4 pawn. So, okay, those are some basic ideas in the opening. This is what both sides want to achieve. Now, let's get deeper into that. So, d6. As I said, you could play a6, you can continue with castles. It basically leads to the same, uh, to the same position. Castles here for white. A6. Now the reason uh, black plays A6 is that his bishop is a very strong piece. And as we said, D4 is one of white's main breaks, and black wants to be able to tuck his bishop away to safety to A7 in anticipation of the D4 break. And black is often going to play A6, bishop A7, 
before white plays d4. So that's one thing. a6 is a very common move. Here, as we said, once the d6 pawn has, uh, has been played and uh, the e5 pawn is defended, knight to a5 becomes a threat. Now, it's not a real threat yet because the king ca hasn't castled yet, so you might get away with, uh, uh, with some tricks. But, as a general rule, once the e5 pawn has been defended, play bishop to b3. And this might seem as a waste of tempo once again, but this bishop is your most important piece in the position. And you want to be able to bring it to safety if black attacks it. Okay, uh, here black continues with bishop to a7, knight b to d2. Now, uh, the knight maneuvers. The second part of white's plan, and you might uh, consider the Gioco Piano as a three-stage plan for white. Uh, the first part of the plan, after c3, knight of 6 d3, uh, is to create uh, an escape square for your bishop, support the d4 break, and then start developing your pieces, the second stage. After d6, the first uh, developing move which you have to play is castles, get your king to safety. Uh, after a6, bishop to b3. The second stage is complete. You've just saved your bishop. You are ready to uh, develop the rest of your minor, minor pieces and get into the middle game. Now, how do you develop? Knight b to d2 is a very common maneuver in the Royal Lopez and in the Gioco Piano in, uh, in the Italian game. Uh, now, what this move does, uh, sometimes you might put your knight on c4, that's sometimes an idea, but generally, what you want to do with this knight is, after you've played rook to e1, you want to play knight to f1, and then either knight to g3, which is more common, or knight to e3, and then from these squares, you are controlling f5, and you are controlling, uh, you are controlling d5. The main at attacking idea for this knight for the knight which is on b1 is to get to f5 remember this now if you can uh, comprehend this idea that you have to remaneuver each one of your pieces to a perfect square in order to create attacking possibilities in the italian then all of a sudden everything becomes possible now this knight wants to get to wants to get to f5 how do you do that knight to d2 knight to f1 knight to g3 knight to f5 this is your attacking idea in the meanwhile of course black black is going to make moves but this is what you want to do so your attacking plan is get your rook to e1, get your knight to d2 and to f1. Uh, the most common square for the dark squared bishop is e3. And your light squared bishop remains here until black chases it away. Very often black is going to play bishop to e6 challenging your bishop. You don't really want to take, let's see this position for example, if bishop to e6 you don't want to take because then your maneuver with knight g3, knight to f5 doesn't really work because this pawn on e6 is very useful taking away key squares from your knight. I'm not saying this is bad. The engines sometimes recommend this move as the best move. Sometimes it is the best move. But generally, as I said, Gioco Piano is about ideas, not about strict move orders. So as a general rule, you don't really want to uh, capture this bishop after after black plays bishop to e6. If your queen is still on d1, then you would be perfectly happy with this posi position. Let's say you play rook to e1 here and black captures. You're putting pressure on the b7 pawn and on the on the f7 pawn. So this is, this is a great position. So this is one part of the plan. Okay, uh, another branching of the moves after castles a6. As I said, bishop to b3 is the most common idea. The second most common move after a6 is the move a4. Now with the move a4, once again, you are giving your bishop an escape square. So if knight to a5, then simply uh, bishop to a2. Secondly, you are threatening to expand on the queen side. And if you have seen uh, any recent grandmaster games in the Italian, this is actually a variation which they've delved very deep into and there have been a lot of discussions on the subject on, on, on this line and Fabiano Caruana is one of the great exponents of the opening so study his games. So the main branching of the of ideas in the Gioco Piano for white are either to play bishop to b3 or to play a4. I myself prefer to move bishop to b3 because I think that the positions are very comfortable for white. Okay, uh, let's get a common position on the board. Bishop a7, knight b2, d2, castles, h3. Uh, now the move h3 can be played but isn't necessary. Uh, I myself prefer the move rook to e1 here, and uh, that's slightly less common than h3. But the point of h3 is that you want to prevent the move bishop to g4. Now, once again, uh, h3 is a move you want to play, and that's a move you are trying to play, in fact. 
So I think that bishop to g4 is a waste of time for uh, for black. And after bishop to g4 is played, you play h3 now, and if black plays bishop to h5, then your common plan of knight to f1, knight to g3 is going to dislodge the bishop anyway. And uh, whether the bishop is on g6 or on c8, it's still controlling f5, and it can capture the knight on f5. Uh, so I really think this is a bad idea. So let's say black continues with knight to e7, you play knight to g3, and black has to retreat. Now, firstly, black has taken away the perfect square for, for his knight, because black also wants to control the key square f4 in his case. And the bishop is sort of staring at the wall of pawns, so... I really think that bishop to g4 isn't such a good idea for black. It can be played, of course, but if you're not very skilled uh, in utilizing this idea, then, then you might find yourself having a useful, uh, useless piece on, on g6. That's why I think that after knight b to d2 castles, h3 isn't really a necessity. You can play it, but I think rook to e1 is more precise. Uh, here, black continues with h6, making Luft, uh, preventing after this maneuver, as we said, uh, black doing, white doing the same thing, playing bishop to g5, rook to e1, bishop to e6, and here, as I said, you can exchange, you don't have to exchange, I think that exchanging is not a good idea positionally, I prefer the move knight to f1 here, and after rook to e8, knight to g3, just continuing with your, with your normal opening plans of transferring your knight to f5, putting a lot of pressure on black's position, and uh, not simplifying the position, but giving yourself an attacking edge. And as a general rule, white is always better in the Gioco Piano. Uh, not much better, but he's a smidget better, and that little smidget could mean an attacking advantage, which uh, is uh, unstoppable. So, if you compare the pieces, uh, firstly, uh, this bishop... Uh, can be dampened with the move d4. That means that uh, this bishop, even though it's still undeveloped, is potentially much better. Secondly, this knight on c6, of course, is much worse than the knight on g3, and that's why one of the main ideas for black is to transfer his knight from e7 to g6. Uh, thirdly, uh, white is much quicker to get his knight to f5, and... Uh, once that is played, black is either going to have to give up his bishop pair and leave this monster bishop here, or even worse, if black exchanges here, the knight to f5 becomes a real threat. So let's say black defends here, let's say rook to b8. Now this position is already really hard to play, and here you can already see, let's say black makes a mistake, let's give black a nothing move. Uh, knight takes, I'm sorry, bishop takes h6, and after this, knight check, and let's say the king goes... Where does the king go? Uh, you can see this combination. But so, so there are a lot of attacking possibilities for white, and very quickly uh, black would find himself in trouble. Okay, after h6, rook to e1, another common move for, for black is the immediate knight to h5, threatening to get his knight into f4. As I said, black is trying to do the same thing, uh, but white is always one move ahead. And here, uh, the main move is knight to f1, uh, just to make sure that after knight f4 you can capture uh, the knight on f4. The main move for black is queen to f6, uh, trying to defend the threat. Bishop to e3 and the position goes on. One thing you should be careful about is that once the black knight gets to h5, you might be tempted to play a tactical move such as knight to e5. Uh, it can work in some positions, but be very careful because it doesn't work most of the time. Let me show you just one example of how uh, this position could go terribly wrong. Let's say knight takes e5 here. A simple move such as queen to h4, double attacking the f2 square. And the, you basically have to give up your knight, otherwise you're going to be checkmated. If you try to save your knight, knight e to f3, uh, queen takes f2 check, king h2, queen to g3 check. You can see that this is just horrible. In fact, this is checkmate now because, because of the bishop. So you can get into a lot of trouble very fast if you are uncareful with your tactical uh, moves. So after knight to h5, if you get tempted to play knight to e knight takes e5, be very careful and calculate that very precisely. It does mean it does look as if you can win the win a pawn, and of course, if black captures here, then you do just win a pawn. You don't, in fact, in this position because black can capture here, but in some positions you can. So this is one attacking plan which you have to be aware of, but be aware of that it doesn't work most of the time. Okay, um, uh, so the best move after knight to h5 is knight to f1. Queen f6, bishop e3, knight to f4, knight to g3, just ignoring this. Now black, of course, has attacking ideas of his own uh, with some sacrifices here. 
and uh, you have to be careful about those, especially in positions where uh, black, uh, after knight to h5, let's say, plays uh, a position such as with, with moves such as bishop to e6 and queen to d7, and then threatening a sacrifice here. So, yeah, black has his threats, but white is generally faster. Okay, uh, the main line after rook to e1, bishop to e6, you just ignore that knight to f1, rook to e8, knight to g3 is a very comfortable position for white. Now, once again, let's go over the ideas. Um, white wants to play d4. Uh, in some positions, probably here already, black can play the move d5, just trying to get more control in the center and uh, open up the position to his own advantage. Here, of course, after takes, black has to be careful about losing the, the e5 pawn, but here it might work. So, as white, you have to calculate on every single move in the middle game, whether you can play d4 to your own advantage and whether black can play d5. Uh, the second thing is you have to try and get a position in which knight to f5 works. And uh, it might not work here, but let's say after a move such as knight to h4 here. Okay, let's, let's give uh, a move to black. The main move here is d5. Uh, after d5, the main move for white is queen to e2. Uh, the, second uh, the second best move after uh, knight to g3 is bishop takes b3. And after queen takes b3, queen to d7, just ignoring this because it's too, uh, uh, it's too risky to take. I believe that you actually lose your queen. Let's just calculate this. That. Okay, so queen takes here. Let's turn on the engine. Uh, yeah, okay, you lose the queen because uh, bishop check if queen takes a6. So that doesn't work. Uh, so queen to d7, and after queen to d7, uh, mm -hmm. let's find the move for white. Here, of course, knight to f5 seems very tempting, so let's say knight to f5. And once again, you can see that black is uh, under a lot of pressure, and in some positions, black might find himself even less developed than here. Uh, black often has problems developing his bishop from c8. Black often has problems positioning his queen, and white always seems to have more space. White always seems to have an attacking edge, and more maneuvering, maneuvering possibilities. Let's go over the opening once again, uh, just to, to make sure uh, I go over the, the opening moves clearly. So e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5, c3, gioco piano, knight f6, d3. The gioco pianissimo, the most beautiful variation of the, of the Italian game. Uh, here, as I said, the common plan for black. Play d6, castle. Play a6 to make sure you can tuck your bishop away, uh, because d4 is a much stronger, much stronger threat. Uh, for white, you want to castle. You want to put your rook on e1. You want to make uh, room for your bishop to come to c2 that you have done with c3 and d3. After that, once black plays d6, you want to play bishop to b3 just to make sure you can get to c2. The second move you can play is a4. You want to go for a classical knight maneuver, knight uh, b to d2, knight to f1, knight to g3, or to e3. Controlling the f5 square, controlling the d5 square, controlling the center. You want to create a quick attack. You might consider moves such as knight to h4, knight to f5. You might consider sacrifices on h6 after black has played h6, uh, especially if your knight gets to f5. You want to put as many pieces next to black's king and create an attack. And... Uh, at the same time, you want to open up the center uh, very rarely, much more often you want to close it down with d4, because in a position, let's say h6, uh, d4 doesn't work here, but let's say it worked. You will often get a position like this, where you have these two pawns, which you can then defend, which... Uh, will prevent the, the black bishop on b6 or on a7 from being from being active, and you are going to play with my, one more active piece than black. This bishop is always going to be better than black's bishop if you manage to play d4. So this is one idea. You have to make sure that you take away space from black uh, one tiny bit at, at, a time, at a time, and you have to make sure that you create an attack one tiny bit at a time. Don't be in a rush. Uh, the Gioco Piano and the Gioco Pianissimo are very calm opening, as the, as the very name says, Gioco Piano means a slow game. So just be prepared for a patient, maneuvering game involving a lot of positional thinking and a lot of strategic uh, ideas which you have to develop in your head. Don't expect too many quick tactical wins, uh, even though Gary Kasparov has played uh, the Joko Piano with... He, he has some 20 move wins, and you can of course win easily if your opponent is unprepared, but be prepared for a slower maneuvering game. 
Uh, okay, everybody, I hope you uh, liked this video on the Gioco Piano. Let me know what you think. Uh, share your own ideas in the comments below. Uh, the series uh, on the Italian game is over. You can find all the videos in the description below. And uh, thanks very much for watching. Let me know what you think. And uh, stay tuned for more chess. See you later. Bye-bye.